Good morning. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking His glory to the ends of the world. In this morning's message is captioned, Your Divine Destiny. Your Divine Destiny. And the theme scripture is taken from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I'm reading from the KJV. Paul says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship, his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. One day God said to me, Make sure you fulfill your purpose. He didn't say, I will make sure you fulfill your purpose. This is because you can be a Christian and not fulfill the purpose for which you were put on this earth. The saddest thing in life is not death, but a man or woman who dies without fulfilling the purpose for his or her life. Your life is an investment by God. One day he will come for your returns. There is a purpose for which you were created. You didn't just happen on the scene. There is a reason why you are living in this world at this time, at that place, and in this season. The fact that you are a Christian doesn't mean you will fulfill your purpose for life. But there are many Christians, including ministers, who die without fulfilling their destiny. And that is a, point, a very important point. And that many Christians think that because they are Christian, it means that God is pleased with how they are living their life. Or uh, they think that just because they wake up every Sunday, they go to church, means that they are fulfilling the purpose for their life. So going to waking up every Sunday and going to church doesn't mean you are fulfill your purpose for life. That is good, but that is, you go to church to have fellowship. That does not mean the church has a role to play in, in helping you fulfill your purpose in life. That is, you being taught the word of God rightly, understanding life, understanding the word of God, but you going to church is not, does not translate to you fulfilling the purpose of your life. It doesn't necessarily translate to you fulfilling the purpose of your life. Because there are certain activities depending on the person, and there are certain things you be doing in church, which will be a fulfillment of your purpose as long as that is linked to your destiny. But the mere going to church in itself does not mean that you're fulfilling the purpose for your life. So it doesn't necessarily mean that. And that is why, as a Christian, you have to know that the fact that you are a Christian does not mean you are fulfilling your purpose or your destiny. I remember the story of a great man of God who left for heaven about two decades ago. It was after he had been in ministry for 15 years that God said to him, You have now found your purpose for life. After 15 years in ministry, so all those 15 years, what was he doing? He was not living out God's purpose for his life. Even though he was a minister called a pastor, he was called a pastor, a prophet. That was not your love of feeling God's purpose for his life. I was a minister every day going to church and, and preaching from the Bible. It was after 15 years that he was directed into his purpose. And then God said, You have now found your purpose for life. The Bible says in Psalm 127, verse 1 Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman take it back in vain. Please, I want you to observe the scripture closely. He didn't say something was not built. This scripture is very, 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 very instructive. He didn't say that something was not built. He says that they labor in vain that build it. It means that something was built. So God here is not saying that something was not built. He didn't say that something was not built. They labored, spent resources, time and energy 
to build something, but it was all in vain because God wasn't behind it. It was a complete waste of time. This is the mistake of many Christians. When they see a so-called church with people trooping in and out, they think God is behind it or God is in that church. Not necessarily. The question is, is the vision of that church his vision? Is the church built on the foundation of the word of God? Are things done and run in the church according to his ways, instructions, and order? Don't be deceived by carnal elements. Don't be deceived by how beautiful the church houses or many, how many people are in the church. In the same vein, some person may get so many people in his church just because he's a good talker, like a good marketer. It doesn't just mean that God is behind that. Don't be deceived by carnal elements. In the same vein, your own life is a building. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. It says you are God's building. Your life is a building. We are a building. Don't build your life in vain. There are Christians that when you ask them their purpose for life, why God placed them on his green earth, their answer is, I was born to be a doctor, pharmacist, scientist, farmer, trader, entrepreneur, politician. Some will say, I was born to be a husband, born to be a wife, etc., etc., etc. This is very sad. An answer born out of ignorance. No child of God. You were not born to be a doctor, lawyer, farmer, trader, etc. You're not born so that you'll be a mother. That's not why God 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 brought you on this earth. Primarily. There is an you have to understand that there is a natural destiny and there is a divine destiny. The natural destiny is the destiny sold to you by the society you live in. Even your parents or peers may sell it to you. This is the natural destiny. This is why it's not only Christians who are doctors, politicians, traders, lawyers, etc. Muslims, atheists, homosexuals, satanists, Buddhists are also lawyers, doctors, traders, and politicians. So there is a natural destiny and there is a divine destiny. Now the divine destiny, the true destiny, which is the God-given destiny, only starts when you meet Jesus, when you become a Christian. It only starts when you give your life to Christ. That's when it starts. But there is a natural destiny that everyone is born into when you are born into this world. That is not a God-given destiny. That is the destiny of this earth. The destiny of the world system, of society. So you have to understand that. But there is a natural destiny and there is a divine destiny. You see, you see there is someone that God, this word is going to you. This morning's devotion is for you. God is talking to you. God is talking to you. There is a natural destiny and there is a divine destiny. I don't know who you are, but God is talking to you through this devotion. There is a natural destiny. There is a divine destiny. There is a divine destiny. This is not the God-given destiny. The natural destiny is not the God-given destiny. Like I said, all those professions, they are good. But that's also the Gentiles, the unbelievers too, are enrolled in those. They are unbelievers who are doctors, and they are good doctors, wonderful doctors, great doctors. The unbelievers who are great professionals, great pharmacists, the unbelievers who are very skillful as entrepreneurs or, or any career of engagement. Right? They had not they don't know Jesus by then those careers. That is proof positive and that is a natural destiny. This is not the God given destiny, but the natural destiny. And the question is, does God influence natural destinies? Emphatically, yes. 
Because they see God influencing natural destinies, they think that their purpose of being in life is because of the natural destiny. For instance, the person prays to God, I want to be a lawyer. God made an opportunity for him to be a lawyer. The person prays to God, I want to be a politician. God takes it away for him to be a politician. The person prays to God, pray to God for, I want to enroll in medical school. I want to be a PhD holder. God help me to get a scholarship to be a PhD holder. So because God answered those prayers, they think that it means that my God's destiny or purpose for me in life is to do uh, a teacher, be a lecturer, be a doctor, be a lawyer, no, be a politician. No, that's what you thought it from. God emphatically, emphatically, God influences natural destinies. But when He influences natural destinies, His main goal is how He wants that to impact your divine destiny. And God gives you the opportunity to be a doctor. The primary purpose is not for you to be a doctor, but he is looking at how that being a doctor is going to help you, provide you with the resources to fulfill that divine destiny, which is the most important thing. So, because there are people that you, he brings you in contact with through that profession, that he wants you to influence them by the kingdom, through the kingdom of the kingdom. So you have to understand that God is a strategist, wisdom. So he plans. The day you meet your maker, he's not going to ask you about the natural destiny. God is not going to ask you about how many A's you got in school. Or whether you're a doctor. Like, that's not what you're going to ask you. I was the certificate you, you, you attain. The day you meet your maker, that is not what he's going to ask you. He's not going to ask how many, many money you could have amass in the bank. The day you meet the maker, he is not going to ask you about the natural destiny. You are going to give an account of the divine destiny. Find out your divine destiny and fulfill it. Someone's divine destiny can be as simple as being a Bible distributor. Someone may say, My whole life to be just a Bible distributor Nay, oh man, who are thou that replies against God? Shall the king form say to him that form me? Why hast thou made me thus? See, this such question that people ask is born out of foolishness, it's not wisdom. When a human being you take clay to build a house, you ask the clay, How do you want me to? mold you or oh, mr clay how do you prefer that i you I, I use you what shape you don't ask the clay that question you use the clay for what you want to to be done the desires of your heart the pleasure how you want your house to be that's how you use the clay you give you make the architect they give you a plan according to your taste right or when Apple make an iPhone. Do they ask the phone or the material? How do you want us to make the phone? In, in what way? What functionalities do you want us to give to the phone? No, they do it according to their purpose. But you didn't create those materials. The clay didn't create it. God created it. But even you're using the clay that you didn't create. You don't have the clay. What do you want me to use it for? But when you, it comes to God, He created you. You are asking God, why do you want me to be a Bible distributor? That is not wisdom. That is not what many, many this, this is what many have not understood. It's not what you want to, to be used for. It's not what you want to do. It's what he wants you to do. And that is why the introductory scripture says that we are his work man should created unto good works, which we are foreordained. What is God telling? God is telling that before even I created you, I had my plan for you. I didn't ask you what you wanted to do before I made that plan. I made that plan because I created you and I want you to do that. Your joy should be in fulfilling his purpose. What he wants you to do is what to make you happy. That is wisdom and that is life. These things, there are many 
check so that they will not teach you these things. You see, God is talking to people. You see, I, I don't know people who use devotion will come to. This devotion gets to many people. But God is talking to you. God is talking to you. There is a purpose for life. There are some people who are not just happy because of marriage. Maybe their marriage is not going on well. Maybe they are even single parents. And all that they think about is they think their life has come to a halt because some man left her or some woman left him. Is that all what your life is about? Now ask yourself, some of you, you grew to be 30 before you met the woman or the man you are going to marry. And now you think that after living for 30 years and meeting a person to marry, your life should all be about that again. Marriage is good, but there is more to life. There is more, much more to life. All these, those 30 years that you didn't know that person existed, you were still existing. That should tell you that your life is, is, is far more than that marriage. There is a purpose for life, beloved. There is a purpose for life. You have to understand that this world and their foolishness is going to increase. It's not going to be anything better. Like God says that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to him. So the world is not going to change their values, their value system. How they measure success is not going to change. The world measures success by education, they measure success by marriage, they measure success by money, they measure success by how many properties have accumulated. That is not going to change. But Jesus said, be careful of the cares and the deceitfulness of riches. So it's love not the world, not the things in the world. So the world is not going to change. But you, the Christian, you have to be conscious of the wisdom of God. And you know what really success is. Success is simple. Success is being able to fulfill the purpose of which your maker created you. To him, that is all what success is about. No matter what you gain in this world, if you are not able to fulfill your divine purpose, you are a failure. You are a failure. It doesn't matter whether you are a surgeon. It doesn't matter whether you are a professor. It doesn't matter whether you are a PhD holder. It doesn't matter whether you are an entrepreneur. You have a billionaire. In Dallas, it doesn't matter if you are not able to fulfill your purpose of which you created you, you are a failure. The world will, 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 will be filled, the air will be filled with the produce of men. But to God, you are a failure. And at the end, you are, not, you are going, not going to give an account to your mother or father or to the society. You are going to give an account to your maker. Find out your purpose, beloved, and live it. The rich a purpose. You are not an accident. God knew you were coming. He knew you were coming. He put it here. You find that purpose. There is a purpose for your life. Find it and live it. Your purpose is not your career or profession. That's not your purpose. That's not your purpose. Right? That's not your purpose. These are things He blesses with you to enjoy. Like Jesus said, all those things that the Gentiles seek for. Your Father also needs Maybe that you, you desire them. The Gentiles want to be doctors, they wanted to be lawyers, they wanted to go to school. God also saw that you have those desires, and also He granted you that opportunity. But Jesus said that these are the things that the Gentiles seek for. Your Father also knows that you need them. So he can say, but He seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Let me know that all those things that the Gentiles also seek for was not the purpose. That was the desires that He added to you, He blesses you for you to enjoy. But there was a purpose. And let you know that purpose, the Gentile, you don't seek for it. So anything you find the Gentile also doing is not your purpose for being on this earth. That's why, that's why Jesus was trying to communicate to, 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 to the, the church. That's not your purpose. If you find the thing that you are doing, if the Gentiles who are doing it, then that's not your purpose for life. That's why God put it here. That's not your purpose, your destiny in Christ Jesus. Because the Gentiles, they are not in Christ. And it's true if you find them doing the same thing that you are doing, that you are calling it as your purpose, then that is not your purpose. You have not really understood your main purpose for being on earth. So you can't say that 
my purpose for being on earth is to be a doctor because they, they are unbelievers who don't know Christ, who even hate Jesus, but they are doctors. So that should tell you that being a doctor is not your purpose. Being a lawyer is not your purpose. For the Gentiles too are doing the same thing. But he grants you those opportunities for him to he, he, his love. In as much as he has a cause given destiny for you, he also creates a life for you to enjoy. I don't take the enjoyment to be the purpose. Or you will fail on that. So beloved, understand your God given purpose. You have to understand that this world that you are living. There are people who have who live 969 years old. Methuselah is far gone. <laughs> Moses lived on this same earth. Solomon on this same earth. One day very soon. Your life on this earth will come to an end. But don't be a failure. You have one life to live on this earth. Live it right. There is no second chance. There's nothing like after you become a failure, then you say, Father, give me another chance to live right here on this earth. No, there's one life to live on this earth. Live it right. God bless you.